Coming up on Smart Tech Today, Matthew Casanelli and I are here at a new time and we are pumped. We've got a lot to talk about. It starts out with a hilarious story involving AirPods, maybe, and customs and border protection. Before we talk about everything involved with the smart home, including IKEA's super cool speakers getting some color options, uh, the Google Assistant working with loads more smart home devices, and Apple's own face mask. We've got all that and so much more coming up on this week's episode of Smart Tech Today. Smart Tech Today is brought to you from Twit's LastPass Studios. You're focused on security, but are your employees? Well, LastPass can ensure that they are by making access and authentication seamless, whether employees are working in the office or remotely. Visit lastpass.com slash twit to learn more. Podcasts you love. From people you trust. This, this is Twit. twit. This episode of Smart Tech Today is brought to you by MySudo. Life is better without spam ads based on activity, hacked info, or the risk of identity theft. Take back control of your privacy with MySudo. Download the MySudo app today from the App Store or Google Play. Go to mysudo.com slash twit to learn more. And by ExpressVPN. ExpressVPN is ridiculously fast. You can stream everything in HD quality with zero buffering. For three extra months free with a one-year package, go to expressvpn.com slash STT. Welcome back to Smart Tech Today, where we explain the exciting, the dynamic, and the sometimes confusing subject that is the Internet of Things. I am one of your hosts, Micah Sargent. And I am your other host, Matthew Casanelli. Ah, Matthew Casanelli, purveyor of fine Siri shortcuts and the shortcuts catalog. <laughs> Tell mm. us all about it. You said you were going to launch it, and by golly, you did. Yes, and luckily everything went out without a hitch, and there were no problems, and it was fine. So perfect. Good. Um, <laughs> in reality, I was going to launch it on Tuesday, Ended up launching on Friday with a little two-hour breakdown there, um, but that was fun. But since then, I have put out my shortcuts catalog. Yeah, so it's pretty exciting. Um, I even added some little more graphics to everything so that it's a little bit easier when you go in and check it out. You can see, uh, I don't remember how many folders I put up, but I have 300 shortcuts available for people, and then I've documented it's going to be all 300 of the actions in the shortcuts app once iOS 14 comes out. Um, and then I also launched a membership portion and everything. So that's been going great. I've been really appreciative of all the support from people and it's been pretty excited. Um, with that, you get like a lot of extra ways to browse the catalog and things like that. So extra data and I've added like custom tags for every single shortcut and action of like, does this work? without asking for a prompt when you run it from Siri and things like that. So it should be a good resource to build new shortcuts and learn all about the app. So yeah, it's tons of fun and I'm super excited to have it launched. It honestly yeah. feels so good. Like <laughs> I can't even tell I can't you. Imagine. <laughs> uh, yeah, I can't even imagine it just going to the site and uh, checking it out. It's so packed. What's the URL by the way? Um, it's matthewcasnelli.com slash Siri shortcuts. And then it, that's C A S S I N E L L I. If you probably and don't Siri know shortcuts, how to spell my all last one name. word or Siri hyphen shortcuts? Yes, all one word. I figured cool. I didn't want to say hyphen over and over again. So <laughs> fair. Uh, yeah, it's it's jam packed. It's uh, well designed. Um, it's as color you go coded. One of my, it's yeah. color coded. One of my favorite things is going in and seeing the uh, different. What did I do? I went into the like scripting stuff and looked at some of the mm -hmm. stuff that was there. And then I ended up looking at this sort of meme machine that you created oh, that lets yeah. you uh, use symbols to uh, to create the different memes that exist, uh, you know, like the, 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 the person peeking out from behind the building or all those different kinds of things. It's a lot of fun. Um, I'm trying to see. Can you did I name it just memes? Because. One of the great parts for me, at least, is I have URLs that I can type in and go to pages on the internet that have my shortcuts. Like, that's the best part for me. And the actions is like the best. There's so much detail in there that 
I don't want to go look in the app every single time. Like you can't do it from a Mac basically or any PC or desktop computer. So now that's possible to like browse that information. Um, I got it here. Let me also the search field is very helpful. <laughs> yeah. So I wanted to ask though, one of the things obviously that was involved with this is sort of the, the construction and creation and building mm -hmm. Can you talk a little bit about sort of, A, how long this undertaking has been going on, but sort of about the process of creating this, this catalog? Because you, sure. you know, there, there's little notes in there about how you have, um, uh, you, you've got like the launch date of, of when this shortcut appeared in the library and things like that. And so that obviously involved sort of going back in the history and looking at things. So can you just talk about um, how did you go about doing all of this? Basically, I did it as I went because there was there's not a way to go and log when you did it. So I've been using this Airtable for three, four years, maybe. I'm trying to remember because... I, I definitely have been tweeting about Airtable for years and just for anybody who uses it, they do they did just add views to their apps. So they're actually working on their iOS apps, which is fantastic. Um like a gallery view and everything, which is perfect for me. Um but yeah, I basically a long time ago, I mean, it all really started with workflow because I like to tap into APIs using what's now shortcuts and I realized that Airtable has an API for all of the databases that you use that is built off of your own data. So it made it really easy to understand because I basically created a custom table and then the Air, the API was built off of the thing I created. And so like I understood why something was structured this way because I chose to uh. create it that way. And so then that made it really easy to use that API in shortcuts I should. I have to give a shout out to um, the developer of Shortcutify because he made Airtable actions basically um, maybe for me. I don't know, but I was like, please <laughs> add this and these parts. And he like that made it the mental load of just doing some basic stuff dropped. Like just um, I couldn't do I couldn't update data in the database using those, but I at least already knew how from tapping in the database. So. It just made it a lot easier to build a bunch of shortcuts. And then, I mean, even um, Federico Vitici of Mac Stories had a shortcut that he, I think, he, I don't remember when, um, who figured out that you can tap into the API for shortcuts using the iCloud links. So like the unique URLs when you share a shortcut, if you take that ID and then do like api.shortcuts.com, or I don't remember exactly what it is, you can get information about the shortcut. And so that's how I get ah. out all of those comments is I type the, the information about the shortcut in the shortcut itself in a comment. And then the short, I run another shortcut that scrapes it all out and all of the data and then uploads it to Airtable. And then I have okay. a different shortcut that pulls the data back out of Airtable so I can then add my custom like ratings and does this work with ask for input or not and then all that kind of stuff. And then that p updates it back in there so that it has the like all the information I need. And then I use a third shortcut to post that to WordPress using the post to WordPress action in shortcuts with custom fields. And then I've got a whole set of plugins and things like that that all are built off of. I use the default theme in WordPress, but I um, use a tool called Elementor to make those individual pages. So... It's got a whole mix of kind of cool tech all the way down that I would, there was a couple times when I was deep in the, just logging my shortcuts and adding the information that I was like, wow, this kind of is only something that I could do right now at specifically because it's all the shortcuts and stuff. And so that was pretty fun doing that and just going to, it's like shortcuts all the way down. Um, I think I took a screenshot of, my screen time notifications because each of those shortcuts would, I had them post notifications as stuff was happening because otherwise I'd be uploading like 40 shortcuts at once and not, it could mess up or something. And I had to like, I just wanted to know if it's running for five minutes, how many shortcuts it got done. And then um, basically by the end of that, I had used like thousands and thousands of notifications from shortcuts. So 
that was pretty, <laughs> there was a lot there. Um, it's shortcuts all the way down and all the way up. <laughs> oh, yeah, I was going to say, in all the, the possible ways you can go along the Z axis even. Um, yeah. So, I mean, I'm just definitely. excited now to have them like out and I can, I've already just started creating new ones because that's been what's so hard before I got all the folders and stuff too, was I just had too many and didn't have a way of sharing them. And now I do so I can share them and make new ones. And there it is. My brain isn't overloaded. Oh yeah. The share memes one we got up now. We should put that in the show notes for sure, because that's a fun one. It's like a series of, I don't remember exactly like five different ways you can do the special characters type memes where like, it's like the guy leaning out behind the wall or something like that. So, or like, um, yours was, was it in this house or was it this sleeping one? Yeah. In this house, in this yeah. house, we share memes using series shortcuts, I think was the tweet that I put out. Um, it's got, let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 different memes. Yeah. I had like 10 shortcuts. And so, I don't know. That's something I got to work on over time is make one shortcut that does those multiple things. But they're all tr- Siri phrases. I don't know. Those those ones specifically, because you have to type in and change the characters and stuff, you're not going to yeah, be able to use it Siri. And stuff. So, yeah. And then um, cool. I should give you guys a login uh, sometime to go. I'll make some Twitch shortcuts for you all. That's what's fun. <laughs> Special secret Twitch shortcuts exactly. from Matthew Casadelli. Uh Cool. That is awesome. Everybody should definitely go to the website, yeah. check it out, and uh, you know, subscribe to be a member. Um, it's it's fantastic, and there's so much there. And I think you'll end up finding stuff that you know, if you use shortcuts that uh, you didn't even think of. And like I said, a lot of fun little bits that maybe you uh, want to check out too. Uh, let's yeah, go ahead and move on. I definitely on. would appreciate that. Yeah. Um, let's go ahead and move on to sure. our uh, first story here, which is quite a funny one, um, mm-hmm. simply because there are real counterfeit goods out there, and uh, U.S. Customs does its job of seizing counterfeit goods um, to make sure that you know they're not sold for a profit. And so U.S. Customs found what it believed to be some counterfeit AirPods. And it said that, uh, let's see, CBP officers at JFK Airport recently seized 2,000 counterfeit Apple AirPods from Hong Kong valued at $398,000 had they been genuine. Well, you'll notice in a tweet uh, that the CBP Customs and Border Protection put out, there's a response from a company, a very well-known company called OnePlus, uh, who are saying in the tweet, hey, give those back. That's because (laughs) these are not counterfeit AirPods. Instead, they are uh, the wireless earbuds that OnePlus makes. (laughs) Um. (laughs) So they very clearly they say very, on the side. They look very, very similar. <laughs> yeah, they do look very similar. They very clearly say on the side, one plus buds in white with the one plus logo. And so what you th- I think what you have here is an overzealous customs and border protection agent or agents who thought, oh, we've got them. We've got mm. this. This is going to be great. We're going to have this huge seizure. This is going to be perfect. And they seized these buds and opened them, uh, at least in one case. <laughs> and they they're, they're, they belong to a company and they would be sold as OnePlus buds or whatever they're called. Uh, and that's, that's just embarrassing. <laughs> I mean... Are they wrong that these are (laughs) copies of AirPods? Because look, they didn't look exactly like AirPods, and they have like uh, other colors. So, (laughs) if (laughs) this was my experience at CES, was there was like four hundred brands that made what were single earbud looking Air AirPod things. So, (laughs) it's just amazing. I think it's like I think. Obviously, this is an error, but it is like just speaks to the legitimacy of like how yeah. much people are copying in these products. And OnePlus 
can be pretty shameless about some of this stuff. So it's just a good joke of the day, basically. And they they leaned into it well, which is nice. They tweeted another thing that's seize the day, seize the music. So <laughs> they're, they're, they're playing it off nicely. Them, which is, I mean, I'm sure it. more people will hear about their product than would have before yeah. <laughs> or something. So And they kind of look nice, to be honest. I'm impressed. <laughs> I don't like know why I'm talking in Mickey Mouse's voice to say it, but <laughs> <laughs> I'm impressed. <sighs> uh, <laughs> let's move on. So you and I both got an email, clearly, uh, from, well, maybe maybe you got it somewhere else. I got it in an email uh, because I subscribed to some other uh, newsletters from The Wire Cutter. And The Wire Cutter has announced a new uh, newsletter, excuse me. And it is called Smart Home Week. And it is a series uh, with smart home tips and tricks, with smart home gear, uh, with further reading, etc. So that you can see uh, all sorts of information about the smart home. That's right. The Wire Cutter, my favorite place to go uh, to, I should say, Wire Cutter by New York Times. Um my favorite place to go to get recommendations on products for my home and in many cases for technology products uh, is going all in on the smart home in, in, in this sense uh, of providing news and uh, reviews and other things about the smart home. So this is this is uh, fun. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, they've definitely they've got a huge host of stuff out um, just to get you started off to, which is. I've definitely, there's a couple articles we'll talk about one later on, but because it, of course, covers shortcuts, so they immediately got my eye. (laughs) But um, I think the first one that is good is just easy smart home essentials for renters that I thought was interesting because a lot of these things we have ended up talking about on our show. So it's been, it's always nice to see some validation from the wire cutter or something. Um, But then again, also we have, some different opinions because if you have a different set of criteria, it just ends up a little bit differently, but it's kind of cool to see the, like, I mean, I guess we were saying it looks a little bit like a Fisher price toy, but the ring alarm, um, in the smart home renters part for the, and then the smart, smart detector, like, I don't know. I, do you have a nest, uh, do or no, I sorry, thermostat? A, um, I don't have a nest thermostat now. Oh, okay, I was gonna say, but you you do have one of those wise, right? Yes, I yeah, it is interesting. I don't think I not I don't agree with their wise lock thing because I think the level lock that we've been talking about seems seems like the oh uh, yeah you know what okay I forgot the renter's angle there it is <laughs> that makes yeah. sense. I was curious. Uh, um, because I saw you tweeting about it, their last pick is just going for the Echo Dot, probably because it's the simplest thing if you're just living in an apartment or something like that. But um, did you get that Yoda one that just came out? <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I saw it and I thought it was adorable, but it's it's impractical. And so it was... See, there's, there's a certain level of like, if it is of enough interest and coolness to me then the price is less of a factor but it makes what is a small device take up like double the it's like having two echo dots right next to each other and so for something mm-hmm. funny and silly like that it, maybe one day when i'm working back in an office again i'll get one yeah. to have on my desk at work um because i've got space there but here in my home i don't have space. What's interesting is that it's made by OtterBox. Um, so <laughs> I wonder if that means that it's very strong and if it falls, it will be, uh, you know, you're, you'll be protected. Oh no, they have an alien for the, oh my goodness. So it oh, looks I didn't like they see have, that. yeah, they've wow. got an alien stand for the, uh, Echo Show 6, which for folks who are listening, the, it's the alien from A Bug's Life, the no, claw. Toy Story. Oh, no, Toy Story. Oh, my God. Did I say A Bug's Life? <laughs> yes, I meant Toy Story. Whew. It is time, Matthew Casanelli, to talk about one of our favorite companies to talk about. Mm. It's Wink. Yeah. And uh, as we have mentioned, <laughs> as wink, we've wink. mentioned before on this show, uh, Wink decided that so so 
it makes this smart home hub. And for the longest time, you could purchase the smart home hub and bring it into your home and connect your smart home devices to it. And then because of stuff and things, uh, they realized that they needed to find a way to continue to make money. And that's understandable. But the way that they did it was by saying, hey, this thing that you paid for that has worked up to this point all on its own will not work all on its own now. You have to pay a monthly subscription fee. Uh, and they kind of kept pushing it back and saying, okay, well, we're not going to do that yet. We've heard you. You're upset. Okay, we're going to wait. We're going to wait. We're not going to do that yet. We heard you. You're upset. They finally did it. And then they had a multi-day outage of the Wink platform. <sighs> so after making the switch to the subscription service. Then the company started from at least uh, September 10th uh, to have an issue where there were outages entirely in some cases and uh, degraded performance in other cases. And I guess some people were concerned that they were under a DDoS attack, a distributed denial of service attack. But Wink put out to say... We just wanted to let you know that we're still here and we're not under attack. Rest assured that we are working diligently to get everything back online. All updates will continue to be shared at status.winkapp.com. As of today, I go to Wink and uh, there are no outages. It looks like on September 13th, uh, that was the last day of issues. September 14th today, as we record this, uh, there are no reported issues with the Wink system. So one of the promises of offering the subscription service was if you pay for us, we're going to get better. But they don't mm -hmm. seem to be getting better. It doesn't seem to work. It's the thing. It's the problem. <laughs> What's up, guys? What's going on? Um, yeah, not great. I'm no, definitely it's... curious. It does seem like this is another mark the in the ball. slow demise of not so slow demise of Wink, but we'll see. I mean, I'm just mostly curious um, because we have a few listeners who definitely have one of these. Says, does this make a difference? Like now, if you can't even necessarily rely on it for days at a time, like turn on your lights for days at a time or automations failing and things like that is not great um so i'm curious let us know if you are switching or something like that because we love to know from the community that's oh it's like i don't have one of these so can't it looks pretty bad to me but if you rely on it and would just want it to keep going then maybe you are gonna stick through it so let us know yeah uh, up next, I think this is kind of a of a fun little bit you you've you found. Um, so IKEA has made smart speakers, as you well know. Uh, you know th these have existed for a while, um, and I find them to be quite pretty, uh, pretty That's speakers. Great. And they've just come out with it kind of in the style of smart speakers, it seems, especially uh, Amazon's. They've come out with some covers that you can get to put over your smart speaker to sort of customize it a little bit. So I love mm. this dual purpose device. It's a speaker and it's a shelf. It's, uh, you know, it's a side table for your, your, uh, your bedtime table. And so Having all of that and a little device that can play music or play your podcast or your audio book or whatever, I think it's so clever. And so this um, new edition of what they call shrouds and plates um, are available for the not just the uh, what is it the symphonisk um, speakers, but also oh no no okay excuse me they're yeah, both they're symphonisk there's the for yeah, there's the bookshelf speaker and the lamp speaker, and they both have shrouds, shrouds for the uh, the the lamp, and uh, what do they call them? Sleeves for the the other. So you can cover them, which is kind of cool, and you know make them blue or whatever color you want. There's like this pretty red color, uh, and they're they're pretty 
inexpensive. So yeah, yeah. it's unique. These are there. It looks like they're not totally available across the whole U.S. yet, but they're coming soon. And I think really the interesting thing is if you haven't seen a lot of IKEA's speakers, they're doing a lot here. I mean, this is partially a partner or it's not partially, it is a partnership with Sonos. So these are good speakers also, and we'll work with that system, but they have a whole set. Um, I don't have a link for the show notes or anything, but I've been seeing this guy on Twitter tweet about like little pocket speakers that you can set on your waistband and things like that. So I, I was really impressed. I haven't, I, I mean, I obviously haven't been in six months, um, but I, even the last time I went, they have a lot of like braided cable type, type things and I have a cool little um, outlet. I guess it's back over here somewhere, but um, that I think they just have like a lot of interesting smart home stuff that fits in with kind of that more modern look than sort of just like tech appliances that are sitting there. And I think the floating shelf thing, especially for these is really cool. So I'm hoping to maybe get a set of this and I'm not sure where, exactly where I'd put yeah, it. Yeah. I think I might have I to like get the one of these to, lamps and like color and swap out the face plates and stuff like that. It's very Actually, Ikea. I have to, <laughs> yeah. I think I might have to get, I might replace the lamps in my office or in my bedroom with these symphonic mm-hmm. lamps. Do they do? Do oh, they just the take? Yeah. Lamps too. yeah, yeah. It looks like they just take a standard bulb, which is good. Um, oh man, it'd be really nice if you could, if you could sync them up with your, uh, with your television, and then you could have um, hmm. them on the left and right side of your couch or your sofa. Would that be like behind and, you, though. Yeah. Well, no audio to the left and right. I mean, like stereo audio yeah. to the left and oh. right of you. So you're I'm sitting on your if sofa. This works with. These aren't the Sonos one. I guess I have a... You can do Sonos over AirPlay if you have a Sonos one. So you could like... I do that right now. I have a one of my shortcuts that I put out is it AirPlays to the Sonos that then is connected to the kitchen speaker. And so I just like play music in the other room even when I'm not in there just because that's the only way. <laughs> With AirPlay at least. That would be it. Oh, yeah. You can stream the same sound to several speakers or choose different music for different rooms. Huh. Interesting. The bookshelf uh, speaker, okay. 100 bucks, too. Yeah. I, I'm, this is, yeah, this is what I have to look into now. I, I've always kind of, I've known that they existed, but I didn't know kind of how, um, I didn't realize there were Wi-Fi speakers, which I like over Bluetooth speakers. Um, so, yeah, this, I, I'm, Maybe that's the next uh, place I go to experiment. Uh, let's talk about something that I've been thinking about for quite a while now. And mm-hmm. I remember saying this to my partner not too long ago. Uh, we were out and about and I have this problem of forgetting to eat because I just don't really like eating. Um, and I, I find it to be just kind of uh, a nuisance. And so we were out and about and I had had a cup of coffee, but I hadn't eaten yet. And, uh, we were at the store and this has been, this was before the apocalypse. Um, and yes, I called it the apocalypse. And, uh, I went to the store, we were at the store and I got, you know, some sort of oven cooked item. I don't know if it was like a gluten-free pizza or whatever. Anyway, it went into the oven to be cooked. And I remember get, getting into the car and saying to him, I really wish I had a smart oven because Pre-heating, we could have it yeah. preheating and it'd be ready by the time we got home. Ooh. And Samsung, oh. right? It is Samsung, not LG. Uh, yes. Samsung yes. was listening to us. Uh, sorry. sorry. <laughs> so I, I was pretty sure it was Samsung, but then I, I thought I heard you say no. And I was like, oh, I guess it's not <laughs> Samsung. Um, Samsung was listening to me and they have come out with a, it's, it's a smart range. So here's the thing. Anytime some new smart technology comes out, AKA something that's either Wi-Fi connected or Bluetooth connected or whatever it happens to be, uh, you will always have the people who say, why do you need that? Why do we need that? Why does anyone need that? Da, 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 da. And folks, let me be honest with you. I used to be one of those people. 
but then I, through the, um, through the process of, of opening my heart and my mind and my soul to understanding that, you know, my ability to do things and others ability to do things are different and different experiences and different, um, uh, necessities means that there are some people who might very well need something like this, uh, who, you know, it, it's, they have, uh, movement issues where it's difficult for them to, uh, to get the, the range started or get the oven started or, uh, have trouble seeing what the dials are. I think of my great grandma who, uh, she had to carry around a magnifying glass. She had macular degeneration. She had to carry around a magnifying glass and a flashlight to set the oven because she couldn't see what wow. the, uh, characters showed without it. And so something like this, where she could have spoken to the air uh, to have it set for her, and then she can go about her way doing the cooking that she likes to do, would be awesome. So it's not just, uh, you know, uh, people in their blazers and and uh, their, you know, able-bodied selves walking around smugly having technology they can boss around, but there's more use for this than just uh, those folks. And so... Yes, there's the funny ha-ha and the silly hoo-hoo of why does anyone need a an oven they can talk to? But I certainly would love to have an oven that I can talk to. Mm-hmm. And um, I think have this a is... is cool. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know what? My my, If my oven wants to be my therapist, then by golly, it should be able to be. Uh, I just Scott, imagined... That- this is way too far, but if the they could program the door to open as it talked to you. Oh my God. Hello. <laughs> How are you today? And you can turn it down or up. It's like, I want it more flappy. Hello. How are you, Micah? No, no, Just less flappy. Less flappy. Everything in its path. Uh, well. Um, can you go back yeah. to that scroll, Kevin? I was, uh, sorry. I, <laughs> I got distracted by flappiness, but I do want to <laughs> read about this. Um, it's got an air fryer built in, which those yeah. are trendy right now. Everybody <laughs> loves an air fryer. Uh, if you don't have an air fryer of some sort, then who even are you is what it seems like. Oh, no. Um, oh, that's no. not coming from me, folks. That's coming from the world. You have to have an air fryer apparently. Um, but it's got, it's a convection oven, which folks, a convection oven, oh, beautiful, wonderful machine. Um, I wish that I, that's one thing. One day I'll have a convection oven and maybe it'll also talk to me. Um, but I, I think this thing's gorgeous. I'm sure it's very pricey. Um, probably let's see, let's see. Oh, wait, that's that's not too bad. Starts at a thousand dollars. Yeah. That's what I was going to say. At least my context going into what's going to be an Apple event tomorrow is that's less than an iPad. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, obviously I think that's starts at, so that's more likely going to be like 2000 or something like that, but it's still, I just wish I was like, I, I I live in a hundred year old house with a gas range. So I don't even know the technical part about installing something like that, but that would be pretty nice. And do you have Samsung is, uh, yeah, we have, Oh, I'm so jealous. I mean, it's not great for controlling exact temperatures or preheating the oven, which takes like 35 minutes or something like that. So it's not that I would love to upgrade to something. What was that? You have an older one though, right? An older gas stove. I feel like it's from the the house is 120 years old. So it's very, (laughs) very old. Somehow it still works. Um, but because I think that's I mean, one, one of the point they make in the article is like you don't have to have an air fryer on your counter too because we don't have a ton of counter space and just that's like true. less appliances would be good. Oh my god, are you gonna get one? Oh, I'm gonna I come mean, to your house every day. Not, but <laughs> I mean, hey, this is what like Samsung. I used to know them. Nice new. <laughs> this is what I used to know Samsung for is appliances, not phones. Mm-hmm. So this is like their bread and butter, at least. But now yeah. with the whole smart things bread connection and in the kitchen, yeah, I don't think you make bread and butter in the oven. So <laughs> maybe on the stovetop, I guess it's a thing. It's not a British I thing. Bread and butter wrong. 
I'm just kidding. Uh, let's move. Let's move on. Actually, we need to take a, a quick break here, sure. um, folks. I am pumped to tell you that my pseudo is bringing you this episode of Smart Tech Today. Listen, everything you do online increases your digital exhaust, spreading your personal information across the digital world, like your name, phone number, and email address, your credit card numbers, your billing and your shipping address, your browsing activity, and, well, a whole lot more. That is highly sensitive information identifies you and your private activities, which leaves you vulnerable to spam and scams and a whole lot worse. You want privacy for your daily digital activities, and that's why you need my pseudo. With my pseudo, you can quickly create different profiles. Those are called pseudos. Each one can have a working phone number, email, virtual card, yes, a virtual card, and a private browser. You give your pseudo profile a purpose like shopping, selling, or online services. Now, every time you talk, you text, you email, you browse, or pay, you use that pseudo profile and finally take back control of the information you share. Here's an example. With the MySudo app, you can create a new pseudo profile with a custom phone number and email address. Name your pseudo for what you plan to use it for, such as selling or shopping. When potential buyers or services ask for your contact info, you use your new working pseudo phone number and email address instead of risking the exposure of your personal information. You can send and receive calls, texts, and emails with contacts from the My Pseudo app. Calls you receive are clearly designated that they're coming from your selling pseudo for easy recognition. You know you're secure with MySudo because it has no login or credentials. MySudo does not require security-prone login or password. Instead, a private key is created that only the user has access to securely on that device. There's encrypted cloud. All metadata is stored on the cloud encrypted. No one, not even MySudo, can read any user's communications. Only the user holds the unique encryption key. And end-to-end -end encrypted communications. All your communications with other MySudo users for messaging, for voice, for video, and email are always encrypted. And only you have access to your data. In fact, Leo here on the network recommends MySudo. Uh, it was on iOS today where he shared MySudo for the first time. And I immediately downloaded it. I thought it was super awesome. And then later on, they ended up sponsoring the network. Super awesome. Uh, MySudo has three subscription plans you can check out. All plans come with unlimited encryption communications between MySudo users for messaging, for voice, for video, and email. Each subscription plan comes with a working pseudo profile, a phone number, email address, and more. MySudo takes protection of your data seriously. When you download the app, they don't ask for an email address or password or your contacts to create an account. You access and utilize various privacy tools easily. Whether you've been hacked, tracked, had to identify theft, or scammed, spammed, or just want to prevent these from happening, the MySudo app will mitigate the common risks that we all face today. Download the MySudo app today from the App Store or Google Play. Go to mysudo.com slash twit to learn more. Take back and control your personal information with the MySudo app and download it today. I've got MySudo running on my phone. And I think it's fantastic. Now I don't get those telemarketer calls except to the pseudo that I choose for it. Thanks, my pseudo, for sponsoring this week's episode. All right, let's talk about Amazon. You can now pay for gas at Exxon and Mobil using ALEXA. Oh, yes. Got a, this is one of those ones also that's always... A little odd because, I mean, unless you're from Oregon or is it Rhode Island where they fill up your car for you? Are those the only states? But uh, otherwise, you still have to one. get. It doesn't matter. There's another one. Hmm. Yeah, um, there's another one because that's where one of my uh, that's where my college roommate lived, and they pumped their own gas there. Oh, or, I mean, they couldn't pump um, their own gas there. But that's what's kind of one of those things is you first see this and it's like, okay, I can pay for gas, but. I still have to get out of my car and fill up the gas. So it's a little odd at first to think, like, why would you need to do this? And I did see a little preview of this at CES, too. They had whole gas pumps and everything. Got to make it pretty literal. But um, I thought the main point about this is at least, I mean, of course, 
not having to get out your card and pay for things is nice, like Uber style, even though you're still filling it up, I guess it's still just like not having to have your credit card. But a big thing that I was imagining is you can keep your wallet in the car because mm-hmm. you don't have to get out of your car and have your credit card out and things like that as you're trying to do something just for safety experiences. Um, that seemed a little bit logical to me. Um, but yeah, it's pretty interesting. I mean, Another part, too, is just like weather. I don't totally buy that as much because you still have to get out and fill it up. It's not that long. But I guess if you just stick in the bump and get back in the car or something like that, that could be nice. But it's kind of one of those things that's a little bit like, why not? As opposed to like, this is totally necessary for tons of people. But um, it's, it's just interesting to see these types of smart products expanding, especially the car type of thing, because... Amazon's been putting a lot of emphasis on that with Amazon Auto, too. So kind of an interesting, their partnership is with Exxon and mobile only, and you have to use Amazon Pay as well. So I don't totally know how many people are using this type of thing, but as it goes forward, I can see it being nicer and spread out to different companies as well. Apple Pay for gas or something. Hmm. It could work. Um, so this is a, is a new service, uh, that, that Amazon is working on called Amazon ALEXA print. Uh, it lets you use your Amazon echo to print stuff from your printer. I have a problem (laughs) and that problem is when I have a printer and that printer has ink, I love to print stuff. <laughs> I, when I was a kid, I can remember um, I would, you know, save up the money that I got as I, I didn't have an allowance, but occasionally I would, you know, get money from doing odd jobs and stuff like that, chores or whatever. And um, I would occasionally spend that money on print printer ink. And when I would have printer ink, because we'd need it, you know, for school and stuff, occasionally to print out. For, um, essays or whatever, um, I would always want to print stuff. And so mom would have a shopping list that she, you know, was writing down and drafting up. And then I would take that shopping list. And with my little graphic designery brain at the time, I would go and I'd open up Photoshop and start to create this (laughs) stupidly silly shopping list design and then print it out for her with check boxes and everything else on it. And, uh, I would, you know, set it so that, um, because I'd have index cards, what is it, three by five index cards. And so I'd know how to set up the printer properly to take the index card and uh, print out onto it and, uh, you know, choose my favorite typeface of the time or whatever. Um, And I loved to make, uh, instead of mixtapes, they're mixtapes on CDs, and I would always design a cover for it and a track list Mm -hmm. and things like that. And so to this day, I still just love to print stuff out. Um, (laughs) Not too long ago... My partner and I, um, he was, he had a fever for a few days and he works a public facing job. And so we needed to get tested for, uh, COVID-19. And, um, so leading up to that, uh, you, you know, you go online in this case, the, the one that's local, you go online, you fill out the necessary information and they give you an ID number, which you take in and they use that to, you know, give you your test. And, uh, we both came back negative. Um, I think I've mentioned it on the show before, but anyway, those ID numbers, I (laughs) made up a little thing so that I could print them out so that we'd have them instead of being written and maybe get the numbers wrong and stuff like that. I just thought, Oh yeah, it'd be nice to have this little thing. We can hand it over to them. So I really like to print stuff. Um, So this is kind of a problem for me because I could totally see myself doing this. Uh, It lets you print out your to-do list, but it also, and this is the thing that I think is going to end up getting me, is you can print out crossword puzzles. So Mm -hmm. you can say, uh, ALEXA, here's some of the things. ALEXA, print my shopping list, print a crossword, Print a coloring page. Print an addition worksheet. Print a salmon recipe. Print a Sudoku pu- excuse me Sudoku puzzle. Print lined paper. That's that a lot one. of stuff to print out, and I want to print all of it. <laughs> <laughs> I have a problem. I really do. Um, 
so not every printer will work with this, but um, HP, Brother, Canon, Epson are some of the printers that work. Uh, it works with the Los Angeles Times, with a place called Jumpstart Academy with all recipes. Um, there's uh, a test page, which I don't know what that is. Um, Just to print the, out like the colors and make sure it works, I guess. Oh, yeah. You can also print graph paper. You can print a maze. How fun. Um, I feel like the paper I, types is very fascinating because that's like if you just have sheets or reams of paper and I, I don't have any lined paper anywhere, it's like kind of hard to do something where you wouldn't need to line paper or graph paper or something. So that's kind of, I don't, I wonder if there's a way where you can set it to barely print any ink because that sounds like a lot of ink to use. Um, oh, wait, you know what? We just stumbled into why it works. Because the other part of this is that they warn you when you're running out of ink and you can automatically order replacements and you get a 10% discount when you do that too. So. Oh, do you? You get a 10? Okay, <laughs> yeah. then I got to do that. See, see, now you're like, print, print, print. or I oh, guess you no. say it out loud, but um, <laughs> oh, this I mean, is I not think good. that is like they're encouraging you to print more so you can perhaps order more replacements of printer ink. So Great. do not print this email if you do not need to as... Man, that's such a that reference. Is that even? I don't relevant. So. I like. I was gonna. <laughs> I don't think people print emails. I mean, I I think that that was kind of one of the reasons I included this was printing your to do list is. I mean, especially for a grocery list, it does make sense. And if you're in the Amazon realm and you keep your grocery list on the Echo, then you don't necessarily. I mean, maybe you could pull up your phone and stuff like that, but it's not like as native as normal. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think I agree printing things and even just working analog on paper sometimes is a lot nicer. A to do list on a piece of paper that you can see at all times is extremely helpful <laughs> as opposed to perhaps forgetting that something was on there. Oh no, I'm going to have to get a new printer. Mine doesn't work with this. Oh yeah. <laughs> I was, a lot of people don't have printers these days, but it is pretty, it's pretty handy in a pinch and I don't actually end up using that much ink, but I, I used to just... use them at, at, at work, but, uh, cause you know, that would only be the place where I needed to print, print things out. But you know, we've been living, breathing and doing everything from home. So I had to I, get some more yeah. ink and I had a long process of cleaning the, um, the ink, the printer ink heads. Um, folks, yeah. if you leave your printer for too long with ink in it, those ink heads will get clogged and you have to use like 97% isopropyl alcohol uh, and multiple, multiple print head cleaning processes. And it's, oh. it's a mess, let me tell you. Mm. Uh, and I ended up wasting an entire black ink cartridge, which was a huge bummer because they're not cheap. Wow. Um, yeah, so not fun. So yeah, keep those clean, and when you aren't using it for a long time, take your ink cartridges out of it. Uh, put the you can get like a little dropper, a dripper dropper, drip them into the ink heads, and um, <laughs> run a cleaning cycle. On your your printer will have an option in the tools for like clean print head. Uh, at least once, twice is probably better before you then tuck it away uh, while it's not yeah. in use. That makes sense. All right, let's see. Um, the Google Assistant continues to climb the charts uh, of, of compatibility and integration by now working with more than 50,000 smart home services and devices. Uh, I'm not surprised. Yeah. There's a lot of <laughs> devices, uh, a lot of brands, um, but... It, it's a lot like the Echo uh, in in the way that it is all set up. So, yeah, this is great for folks who have uh, Google Assistant devices and the Google Assistant just on their smart home on their smartphone uh, to yeah. be able to control all these different things. Yeah, there's. Did you say that five thousand brands? Five thousand? Yeah, five hundred. Yeah, that's 5, a lot. Five hundred um, brands. I think that's, but it is like, I. Do you think that companies, Google and Amazon pushing into these realms is what helps 
those categories basically become established. And I think we'll see over time too, like the um, P-Choip, as we like to call it, or CHIP will help those categories. P-Choip as I like to call it, but no one else likes to call it. Yeah, but I think it's like on a large scale. I mean, they're even saying in the article, I'm sure the the next 100,000 devices will be added even faster. And I think stuff is getting more low power and hopefully cheaper. We'll see. That's up to companies to charge how much they want to. But it's it's becoming more of like a common thing to have that integration. And even as we were saying before with like the smart oven, some of the stuff makes more sense than it felt like originally. Like who needs a smart oven? Maybe there are more uses, especially now that we're at home all the time for this whole year. That's definitely been a, a large emphasis from companies. So it makes sense. There's a lot to go with Google Assistant. Let's see how these other companies stack up in the next few months coming up to the Christmas season, especially like this is we're full on in tech season now, which is very different from the summer where nothing actually happens. So <laughs> it'll be interesting to see this number grow up. Yep. Um, all right. Last but not least is Apple. Um, one of the things is that Apple has made an, what is it? FDA cleared, uh, I know it's at least cleared an FDA cleared um, reusable face mask for its employees. Uh, they have two. Um, one is is uh, an absolute trans not transparent or translucent. What's the other one? Opaque uh, face mask, and the other one is a uh, clear mask, as they call it. Um, or actually, okay, so it seems that that Apple is distributing masks from a different company called Clear Mask. So they make their own, mm -hmm. uh, but Clear Mask is made by a company uh, that helps. Um, it's it's fully FDA approved, not just FDA cleared. And it lets folks be able to uh, communicate using, you know, there are folks who, who read lips and uh, other, you know, use other forms of, of communication and understanding. And so these clear masks work as face masks, but also provide a way to see what the mouth is doing. Mm -hmm. um, and wait, that was the company that makes these also. I mean, that's what yeah, was interesting masks. is they also have like their own just a little Apple version of the setup gear and everything. So it's like wash your hands, peel it open with their little instruction set. And it looks, it looks like, like you bought an, Apple, an Apple watch band or something. Yeah, exactly. So it's uh, interesting to see these companies doing a little bit more in that realm. What, well, yeah, what's left here? Um, yeah, I wanted to just the other article from the wire cutter that I thought was interesting from their Smart Home Week was the appearance of shortcuts stuff in the news. Um, they just have a great article that's the very basic thing that I think a lot of times I can I can miss when communicating about shortcuts is just how I used shortcuts to make Siri finally understand me and just the basic part about creating one trigger phrase that you can speak to Siri and it will do those multiple things. Like I always get up hung up in all the creative things that you can do, but not just the part that shortcuts in the title of the shortcut is now what becomes a trigger phrase for doing things like they were saying, I have multiple commands that I have to send to Siri where I want to turn off the lights and do the smart outlet and the ceiling fan, especially, I mean, the smart home focus is where not just like a scene, but I mean, I can get into another time, the difference between home automations as shortcuts and just a shortcut that you can use as opposed to a scene also. So it's like, there's like a three vector thing coming together, but um, that's why it's still a bit of a mess, but I'm always appreciative to see <laughs> just the basic explanation. It's like, here's how I do this to have one single command. And I was trying to see if the guy followed me on Twitter because I have the exact same phrase just saying, shut it down, <laughs> which is a, oh. from 30 Rock, just shut it down is like our favorite for <laughs> turning off all the lights at the end of the night and stuff like that. So it's a good, good article to check out. John Chase um, from The Wire Cutter. 
Yeah. And then I, I guess, you know, there are a couple of deals here. So the Eufy pan and tilt camera that I talked about before on, um, on smart, on smart home, <sighs> on smart tech mm-hmm. today is, uh, available for 40 bucks, which is a really good price for that, uh, device. I, I have it. I think it's great. My sister has one, um, that she's using as a baby monitor and absolutely loves it. Uh, so it, it's a camera that it works with Apple's HomeKit if you're interested in that. But even just as a camera on its own, it's um, I'm quite impressed with uh, with what it does. So definitely worth checking out at that forty dollar price. That's a really good price, especially for a camera that has a motorized uh, pan and tilt functionality. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm then inter- what? I'm get this. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. I was just going to say I, I think I'm going to get this. I think you I'm absolutely in the should realm think. now that I'm going to start making some of those purchases. Yeah, I think you should. Uh, and then last but not least is that Philips um, Hue has announced uh, some new HomeKit devices, including an update to its iris lamp. And what I see is more importantly, <laughs> finally, uh, truly, actually, an LED light strip that has multiple color zones. Bow, bow, bow. Yeah. Seriously. Um, I have been saying that, that the, that folks should get the, if they're going to go for a light strip, they should get the Lifex light strip because of its multiple color zones. Um, that the Philips Hue one is fine, but it only does one color across the whole strip, uh, at once. And, and that that's kind of a bummer, it, especially it, given how pricey it is. It's, it's expensive for not being able to do the multiple zones <laughs> of color. Um, now there are. Uh, the, the now there is the option to have a what they call the gradient light strip, and Philips is marketing it as a uh, and a great addition for your television. And in fact, I think mm-hmm. I think I'll be reviewing one soon. Um, I've got the Philips Hue Sync box uh, yeah. and love that setup. I've been using that now That's for a long time. Uh, so this is meant to add to that. So I'm looking forward to it because I've got right now two uh philips hue i think they're called i don't remember what they're called they're sort of um pill shaped black lamps that have uh, a panel on the front that they shoot out the color yeah 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 the hue play thank you because i have those too on my tv uh oh yeah and so i've got a play on the left and a play on the right and then the current philips hue light strip that runs across the back of my um entertainment stand so <laughs> if I test out this Philips Hue light strip, gradient light strip, it's going to go on the back of my television itself. And in fact, they've ac- actually asked me what size my television is. So I'm thinking they have multiple sizes. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm, I'll be trying that hopefully soon and adding that to the experience and seeing how that improves upon it. So I, I'm looking forward to seeing how that works. And I think that this could just be good in general, and I can I see a lot of uh, gamers getting gamer gamers who are streamers. I mean, getting this Philips Hue Play mm. gradient light strip. I think that that's going to be where this really shines. Ha! Is there intended. a delay with the HDMI sync box? I know that it syncs. The point is that it syncs the lights to the audio and stuff, but I feel like that doesn't that still take a moment? Like just with gaming, the latency is like. If it has I, a delay, I've never done it with video. gaming, but there is no delay with uh, video because of but the it can way delay the, the video for you. It delays the video. Of it. Yeah, it delays yeah. the video so that the lights sync up. But when you're watching it, then there's no change. I mean, you're watching the video in full. You know, I'm literally watching it in uh, on a television that supports Dolby Vision HDR. And so Mm -hmm. I'm still seeing it in all the brightest blah, blah, blahs at the proper frame rates and all that stuff. It's just that it does it so that it can send out the commands to the lights in time for everything to sync up. And I have had, I've sincerely had no issues with it. It's uh, synced perfectly. But again, I've never done it with games. uh, So I can't speak to those because I don't play those. So I don't know how it works with that. Um, So I don't know if you fire your pew pew laser, if it's going to, you know, light at the right time. Yeah, I don't think it actually would work for real time games just because that has to, gamers are like, if there's more than two seconds, milliseconds yeah. of latency. It has a gaming thing, mode. But, oh, yeah. That's cool. Maybe yeah. that does. Yeah. Too. Maybe it's just like less. But it is, I think, with the multicolor light strip part of it, 
I mean, that's, I think, what really started to sell me on colored lighting was the ability to control that and also have it change over time with the LifeX thing. I think that's really cool. I really n- noticed that that helps me work in this office for six months at a time without ever leaving or going outside kind of thing. Like, Not that that's actually what I'm literally doing, but I, it's made a big difference actually having the colored lighting that can help me change the environment because that's the problem is you just never change your environment. And so yeah, having and that stuff is really good. Place to this place. But I think it'll be wild with the TV. I mean, the example that we were just showing on screen a second ago was like a sports team where half of them are wearing red and half of them are wearing white. And then just like the right side of the wall is red and the left side is white. Like I still haven't found out if these are just extremely overwhelming sensory experiences or not, because (laughs) that might be a little too much for us, but I want to try it one day as well. Honestly. Yeah. I mean, I thought at first that it was going to be, like I said, gimmicky and and distracting, but it ends up, it ended up adding to the experience. I really, uh, I really quite like it. This episode of Smart Tech Today is brought to you by ExpressVPN. Have you ever watched The Office? If you have, you probably know it's based on a UK series also called The Office. But what if I told you there are nine other countries with their own versions of The Office that you've never seen? Well, you probably didn't know about them because they're not usually available in your country. But you can access content available around the world with no geo restrictions when you use ExpressVPN. ExpressVPN lets you control where you want sites to think you're located. You can choose from nearly 100 different countries, giving you access to content that isn't available in your region. If you like watching shows or movies, ExpressVPN is a must-have. For less than 7 bucks a month, ExpressVPN lets you access thousands of new shows and movies on Netflix, on Amazon Prime, on Disney+, and tons of other streaming services. It's a no-brainer. And it couldn't be easier to use. You just fire up the ExpressVPN app on your computer or TV, select a location, and hit connect. ExpressVPN is also incredibly fast and doesn't slow down your connection. You can stream content in HD quality with no issues. In fact, I use ExpressVPN on all my devices. It works on everything. It works on your phone. It works on your smart TV. It works on your streaming box. It works even on your router. So you should get the most out of your streaming service today at expressvpn.com slash STT. If you use our link, you're going to get three extra months free of ExpressVPN. Again, that's expressvpn.com slash STT. expressvpn.com slash STT to learn more. Thanks so much to ExpressVPN for helping me keep my connection private but also for helping me watch whatever I want to online. I do appreciate it. All right, Matthew Casanelli, you have a project that involves headphones and a Nest Home Hub. Tell me what you're working with. Yes, I have a slightly short and sweet one today, but it's something that's been plaguing me ever since I got this product. Um, It's just that I love the... The Nest Hub itself here, I've actually got it next to me and available for once and not unplugged as usual. Um, (laughs) But I like to use it, I've said on many times on the show for recipes when I have it in the kitchen, but mostly it's a YouTube thing on my desk. I want to watch YouTube videos more. But the problem is, I I mean, there's many problems to this, but I wake up at 5.30 in the morning a lot of times just because my body's like, good morning, it's time to get up. Um... And so I will get up and then go into my office, which is just near my bedroom where my girlfriend is still sleeping. And so I want to watch these videos. But when it's too quiet, these speakers are basically just not good enough to hear with any good quality, especially if somebody is putting effort into a YouTube video. I don't want to use like a low quality, quiet speaker in the middle of the morning or something like that. Um, So I wanted to pair a pair of headphones to my speaker so that anytime I wanted to use videos, I could just pop in the headphones and give my command. I don't want to say it out loud, but um, (laughs) then they can pair up and hopefully with not too much delay, which is these aren't totally meant for Bluetooth headphones, but I can kind of casually watch YouTube videos while I work at my desk. Um, And 
one of the problems is that if you are somebody who uses AirPods, it's not very good to have these paired with multiple devices that aren't Apple devices because they basically have to be totally unpaired and repaired as Bluetooth headphones. Um, but I have not used my buds very much. So, or, oh gosh, I hate product Echo names buds. that you can't actually, Echo Buds, there it is. Um, <laughs> I was going to say, how can you not say that out loud? But <laughs> the Amazon's wireless earbuds that are just little doohickeys that you can pull out and stick in your ears and even have um, the noise canceling or transparency type. I don't know. Actually, I think it's pass through mode is what they're called on these. Um, but for the longest time, I just couldn't figure out how to get them to pair to the speaker because these are kind of, it's one of those things where the product you pair through an app on your phone and then the speaker itself is like, all right, now you should connect to the Bluetooth product. And this is, I'll also admit this is me being spoiled by Apple and using AirPods for years and basically forgetting about how to pair Bluetooth headphones to new devices because I just don't do it that much. Um, but it was a little confusing, I think, because each of these feel like they're so tied in through the app of this the service because I had to go through both the Google app and Amazon app to get everything connected. So the main thing that I had to do that I didn't really think about was just fully de-pairing these headphones from my phone, not just doing the little button on the bottom to reset the Bluetooth connection, but to actually make my phone forget it. Because that was what kept happening was every time I would try to use the Echo Buds, it would just repair to my phone. Um, but basically, once I went into the Amazon app and got them disconnected, the way to also get them paired up with the Nest speaker doesn't work just through Bluetooth because it's going for, it thinks is a Bluetooth speaker, not the headphones. Um, so instead of actually going to paired Bluetooth devices and enabling paired mode there, you have to go and set it as a default speaker, which is a little confusing. Um, but once you go into the Google app and go to the Nest Hub itself and go to default speaker, then there's a new blue pair Bluetooth speaker option that wasn't there before. And then I basically just reset it on the Echo Buds. And now I can pop in my Echo Buds. I keep wanting to say the trigger phrase. <laughs> oh, gosh. Um, anytime I wanted to listen to the videos. And there is a slight delay, but... I think it's enough that, especially because it's kind of uh, off to the side, I'm not necessarily like, I want to take notes on this video or something. Not that I take notes on videos, but when I, a lot of times if I watch a YouTube video, I want to fully pay attention to it. I'm not that much of a casual listener. Um, but now this is helping change that a little bit. And the sync up with somebody's voice was like just enough and it's off screen. And if they're hopefully using B-roll and things like that, that make it, easier and not just like straight on conversation. Um, it, seemed, it seemed fine. So this is pretty nice. It kind of stinks to have a dedicated pair of what were wireless headphones or fairly expensive wireless headphones to have to get to that level. But I'd like to find a cheaper solution too. Um, you had told me, I think I ended up getting that Bluetooth connection thing that had tiny little headphones for Oh yeah, setting up things that aren't Bluetooth, but I just couldn't find that. Um, so this, I am glad this worked at least. And now I'm curious how well Google's own headphones pair up with the Nest Hubs specifically. If it does have no latency, that would be pretty interesting. Hmm. Like yeah, a good way to uh, use the assistant more too. But they basically that, just yeah, become, exactly that part. Uh, the pass through thing does work also, which is cool. So I don't. I guess I didn't try using. Um, Amazon's assistant with my voice stuff, but I don't know exactly how it would send the signal to her. Um, so maybe just the pass-through thing. I, in general, I, I'm not a huge fan of the style because when you stick them in your ear, in order to turn on pass-through, you have to like tap in your ear. And even just doing it on these headphones, it it like rings your whole head when you do it. And it's kind of not the best, but... I'm glad I'm getting more use out of them and now I can watch some more YouTube videos, which is why I bought this thing. So no waking up my girlfriend in the morning with somebody just going, Hey guys, right at the beginning. So <laughs> <laughs> that's always the <laughs> <nice. laughs> That's uh, oh, that's, that's my project. Uh, 
Awesome. Well, let's take a little breath before we round things out with our picks of the week. And now it's time for our picks of the week. Matthew, what is, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. I got to get ready for this pick of the week. Uh, one second here. All right. Tell me about your pick of the week. Oh, yes. Micah, you've got the nice chill background for poolside.fm, which is, I didn't, you told me before the show that they have a Mac app too, but this service just came out with a cool iPhone app. And the whole thing is, it's basically a free SoundCloud playlist packaged into, I'll say what is a Vibe app. Um, it is pretty much I love straight that. 80s. Yeah. <laughs> you put that so perfectly, a Vibe app, um, yes. And they also are clever because I'm pretty sure they're using the fonts from old Apple ads and things like that. So it says, like, let's get cellular for their iPhone app release. And all of these things look like retro style. It's got purple and pink gradients with, like, uh, I mean, I don't even know how to describe the textures and things like that. It's a very old school or they've got, like, video playing in the background of Miami beaches and stuff like that. So it, it's definitely a mood opening this app, but it's basically a, an endless playlist that you can just chill to. So it's pretty sweet. <laughs> You're saying all the right words. <laughs> I love it. They have definitely got a brand compared to many apps out there. And I think it's, I was, we were talking before the show of like, I would love to license, not that I don't even know if it's paid or whatever, but just play this on live streams because it's very relaxing and upbeat and the songs are like six or seven minutes long. So it's kind of like turn on your phone and just get the poolside vibes. But (laughs) I was totally prepared to use this to go to the beach last week and um then woke up and the sky was orange outside so <laughs> it's that's been such a bummer because the beach has been my escape too uh for i have been able to outside say, in a month man it's yeah <laughs> it's, it's getting, so bad i'm like please rgb lights just turn something looks different like <laughs> but um i totally have a shortcut now that is opens up a poolside and then airplays it to one of my speakers. And now I've got to add in sets the lights purple or something like that to get. Yes. Oh my sweet, gosh. Sweet beats. <laughs> or sink so it this together is your pick of the week also, you said. Just yeah. So I just was going to say I'm doubling down on this. Uh, I mean, I've got the beach in the background now, so clearly I need to double down on this. Um, it is, it's available as a Mac app. I didn't know now it's available as an iOS app, probably an Android app. Uh, I don't know for that for sure. So not confirmed, um, <laughs> but it's also, you can just go to poolside.fm online. Um, and stream this music. And I like that there are different channels. And I don't know, I've gone there and I've always found something that I enjoyed listening to. So that is, it's not a rare thing for me, but it's certainly something that stands out. Uh, if, if I end up feeling like it's something that I can listen to and I don't have to sort of think about it, it just does, mm-hmm. it's just what I want. That's always a good thing for me. And so with, uh, with, Poolside FM, that's what it was. So I had to make that my pick of the week as well. Man, their uh, desktop folks, or the website is so intense. <laughs> it's like a full old school browser experience. That's awesome. I didn't even know that. <laughs> yeah, I love it. I love, like you said, it's a vibe. It's a mood. Um, it's it's all of the above. It's, it's Yeah, it's aesthetic. an aesthetic. Oh my God, it's my aesthetic, frankly, to be honest. Um, TBH. Anyway... <laughs> Let me stop right there uh, and say that uh, it is time to say goodbye. Uh, if you have, hold on, hold on, hold on. I got to get serious again. Um, let's go with, there we go. Uh, if, <laughs> if you uh, have questions that you want to send in, you can send those to stt at twit.tv. Uh, we record the show live every Monday, so you can tune in live at 11 a.m. Pacific. Uh, I need to change the UTC in the Eastern times. Uh, and then you just go to twit.tv slash live or twitch.tv slash twit to tune in live. But 
the best way to get the show is by subscribing to it. That way, as soon as it's available, it's ready for you. You're ready to rock, ready to roll and ready to get it. And that's by going to twit.tv slash STT and clicking on subscribe to audio or subscribe to video where you can subscribe to audio and video versions of the show in so many different places, Spotify and Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, YouTube, etc. cetera. Uh, Matthew, if folks want to follow you online, what do they go to do that? Uh, you should go to matthewcastanelli.com slash series shortcuts. And actually, I have a new what's new in shortcuts newsletter to make it easy to keep up with the catalog and everything. And that will be going out every Friday after the <laughs> the Amazon emails of the what's new in A-L-E-X-A. So kind of... <laughs> poking fun at that there. Um, but it's just like a bulleted list of some shortcuts from the, that I've published either new that week, which I'll have new ones every week or from the catalog or also I'm trying to link out to people online. So to also, if you have cool shortcuts and you have, first of all, if you don't have a website, set it up and then start publishing them. Cause I want to link to people as well. So yeah, sign up for the newsletter and then get cool links to shortcuts. Sweet. What about you? Uh, you can follow me online at Micah Sargent, uh, pretty much all of the social media platforms or head to chihuahua.coffee. That's C-H-I-H-U-A-H-U-A dot coffee, uh, where I've got links to all of the stuff that I do. Uh, folks, you should definitely tune in tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. Pacific time. Uh, Leo Laporte and I will be covering the Apple event live. We're not expected to see any iPhones, but we are expected to see new Apple Watch models, uh, new a new iPad Air potentially, and maybe even uh, some Air Tags. We'll see what else happens. But uh, yes, do tune in tomorrow, 10 a.m. Pacific. That's 1 p.m. Eastern. Uh, Twit.tv slash live to check that out. Until then, it is time to say goodnight to our smart assistants. Do, Good night. Do we need to change that? Because this is the afternoon for us now. So <gasps> it's time. <laughs> Oh, no, it's time to say, go have some coffee, Google. Yeah, time for lunch. I'm Jason Howell, host of Hands on Android, where each week I take a look at the Android operating system and really dive deep into what it can do for you and how it can improve your quality of life, whether it be tips and tricks on how to use it better, whether it can be little known secrets that open up a world of possibilities. So many topics to dive into, including your emails. Subscribe by going to twit.tv slash HOA. We'll see you there. <laughs>